This is going to be a great episode because in this, in this uh, episode, we're going to talk about five DIY projects that scared me to death. I mean, these are projects that if you want to talk about anxiety, things that would make you procrastinate, <laughs> these were the five projects that had me sweating bullets. And I wanted to do this, epi this episode because I wanted you to know that just because I've got a YouTube channel, just because I know how to use tools, just because I have done things and you're like, wow, that project's cool. It doesn't mean that I don't have my fear. I have fear every time I do a project or mostly from what I've understood about myself, every time I build something that I've never built before, the anxiety is like, it can be paralyzing. So in this episode, we're going to talk about those five projects. We're going to talk about the five reasons, and there could be more, but we're going to cover five of them. And we're going to talk about five things that you can do to get over that anxiety so that you can move on and get your projects done. Because I know there's things that you want to paint. There's things you want to build. There's home improvement projects that you want to do. And I can guarantee you probably have about three, four, five different things that you want to do that you haven't moved on because you're not sure what to do. So we're going to talk about that, but let's jump into the first project <laughs> and I'll leave links down below. So if you want to see either the videos for these projects, or if you want to see the blog post, because not everything was recorded, you can see that down below in the links, just click them and you can hear more about it and read more about it. But the first project for me was painting my 1973, 1973. I think I said that wrong. 1973 shower stall. This was like my three by three turquoise shower stall that I did from, did from my bathroom makeover in 2017. And let me tell you this project, I was so nervous about this project because, you know, I, I wanted the bathroom makeover to, to look so good, but I also didn't feel that I had the skills in order to like paint a shower. <laughs> Some company had reached out to me. This is like at the tail end of my project. My makeover was almost done and everything was looking great. And I was left with like this three by three shower stall that was powder blue, <laughs> right? Very 1970s. And the company said, Hey, do you want to test our shower refinishing kit? And I'm like, sure. What, what could it hurt? I had a company come in to give me a quote. It was like $6,000 to do tile and a glass shower door. And I'm like, I don't have $6,000. I need an affordable solution. And so they're like, here you go. We'll send you a kit and you can refinish the shower. Let me know how it goes. That was six years ago. And guess what? The shower still looks good. <laughs> You're going to get to see that in an upcoming video. I promise you, I'll show you what it looks like now, what I went through the entire process and, and what I do to clean that shower. But we're not going to talk about that. What we're going to talk about is the fear, the anxiety. You can even see in the video, like when I open up the video, I'm like, I'm painting my shower today and I'm scared. I'm really scared. I didn't, I didn't know if I could do it. I didn't know if I could get good results. And I think a lot of times that's what happens when people are doing projects that they've never done before. There's this fear of the unknown. What's going to happen? Is it going to turn out? Am I going to make it worse than what it was before I started? And that can be really damaging to your confidence, right? Like if you have a project that doesn't turn out, that is like the worst thing that could ever happen. You feel like it's the worst thing that could ever happen, right? Because you're like, I shouldn't have done it. I should have just hired somebody. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm stupid. I don't know how to use tools. I'm a moron. And you talk down to yourself, right? About your, your level of skill and ability. And I think that's normal. I think that's normal to have that fear. It's not normal to talk down to yourself. And that's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to question yourself and make you feel, make yourself feel like, you know, you're not as talented as those people on YouTube or those people that you see on Instagram. You know, they're doing so many wonderful things that, you know, you, you're not smart enough. You're not talented enough. You're not young enough. You're not old enough. You know what I'm saying? Like there's all of these different things that we tell ourselves about the projects that we do. And I think that that can be very damaging and prevent you from moving on to the next project. But I'm going to have some solutions for you. And instead of waiting to the end, I'm going to just start to disperse them through the conversation that we're having. So what I would say is, you know, do your research. You have to research when you're doing a project that you've never done before. You can't just jump into it. You have to research it, but you don't want to get caught into this research uh, loop. 
where you start finding one thing and then you're like, oh, but let me go find another thing. And then, oh, I gotta check this out. And then what you find is that it's been weeks, months, years, and you're still researching it. <laughs> That's what you don't want. So what you wanna do is you want to identify the project that you wanna do, and then you wanna do some research and I'll talk to you in a moment about the next step, but that's the first part is doing your research. So the second project that I was definitely afraid of, and this is a project that I still think back on this, and I'm wondering like, how did you even do this? I built my own bathroom vanity. Now, unfortunately, I don't know why I didn't record this, because at that time, I think I wasn't recording everything. Now at this point, if I'm doing a project, I'm recording. I've got my, my for the most part, I got my camera out, I'm taking pictures, I'm gonna document this because somebody's gotta see everything that I did and all the mistakes I made. But on this project, for some reason I just decided I'll just take pictures. <laughs> so I've got a really great blog post on how I built my bathroom vanity, but I don't actually have video footage of that. So I will leave the blog post down below. And I didn't even know how to build a vanity. I didn't use plans, I didn't look, I. I I did some research, but I didn't actually follow any plans from like another creator or another woodworker. But what I did was I decided that I was going to sketch this out on paper, right? So this was before I was even using SketchUp. And I'm going to buy oak because I think oak is beautiful when you finish it. I'm going to dye it. I'm gonna put some liming wax in there and give it this amazing like ceruced oak look. And this is gonna be my vanity. <laughs> Well, let me tell you, there were some mistakes. There were parts of like the drawer that were not sliding in properly. I was worried that the top part, the granite that, you know, the, the, the granite part when that was going to be put in place, I was worried that the whole thing was just going to crash down. It was, it was so scary. It was very scary, but I felt like it was my best project because not only did I go to the community forklift and, and find these amazing oak, well, I guess it was oak, maybe it was oak, but it was a solid wood leg. I guess it was like a leg or maybe it was a spindle or something on a railing. Anyway, I cut those babies down, I stripped them and used those to build up the base of this vanity <laughs> and kind of piecemealed together all the other parts on how it's supposed to go together. But what was really cool was you know, taking these legs and repurposing them into something else and then doing this amazing ceruced oak look, it turned out great. Guys, it has been seven years, no, six years since I built that vanity and it's still standing. <laughs> I remember when I was building it, I said to my husband, but what if it falls down? And he was so sweet. He said, well, then you can build it back up. And I was like, that's the answer, right? Like if something falls down that you build, as long as nobody's injured, right? You don't wanna build a deck and somebody falls off and loses a leg. But as long as you can start over, there's really nothing to be afraid of, right? Like the damage is not gonna be that great. If anything, it's, it's probably gonna cost you more money. It's gonna cost you more time. You're gonna be frustrated. You're gonna, your confidence is gonna take a hit, but you can always start over. And that's what I realized when I was doing this project building this vanity that, okay, if it falls down, I can just start over, but it hasn't fallen down. Now, did I make some mistakes? Yes. The, the drawers that I built were a little tall. So when we went to go put the sink in uh, with the vanity top, the sink was actually hitting against <laughs> the edge of the drawer. So I had to pull out my sander and I guess I could have cut a part of the drawer. I didn't want to cut the drawer. So I actually sanded it down. I think it was, I started with, I think a, uh, maybe half inch plywood and I sanded down part of it to like, it was maybe a quarter inch. So I sanded down a lot so it didn't rub against the sink. And there were some other things too, like where the drawers didn't quite line up and it's supposed to be, a, you know, one of those soft closed drawers and it kind of gets a little stuck, <laughs> it's a little tight. But guess what? I did it. That was my first vanity and it didn't fall apart. But was I nervous? Yeah, I was nervous. But by creating that plan, even though it was hand-drawn, it, it allowed me to see what the vanity was going to look like and then I could move forward because I knew what I needed to do. 
Uh, but it took me a long time. I think it probably took me about two months to build that vanity. Now, if you know any woodworkers, <laughs> you know it doesn't take two months to build a vanity, but it took me that amount of time and I needed that extra time built in. Um, but it looks great and I will leave a link down below to that blog post. The third project that was so tough, uh, and it wasn't that it was tough, but it was I had to get through the fear of can I do this, is building my own closet organizer. Now this was scary as well because I'd never built something this large before. I had the vanity, but that was small in comparison to like building these big partitions where, uh, you know, pounds and pounds of clothes are gonna be hanging from this and it's gotta be supported. You know, it can't come crashing down. And what was, uh, what was very interesting about it is that at this time, I'd already learned how to use, I taught myself how to use SketchUp. So SketchUp is a free program. You can download it online. This isn't sponsored by them. It's just what a lot of woodworkers will use when they're, when they're designing furniture or building things. And because I had figured out how to use the program, I built this freaking model of what the closet would look like down to like, okay, here's where the, the drawer knobs are going to be. This is where this partition's going to be. And once I had everything on paper or on paper in the computer, I could print it out, see the parts I needed. And can I tell you that I didn't waste any wood from that project, any plywood. It wasn't like I had made a mistake and had to go get like, two more pieces of plywood. I was able to figure out, okay, I need this much plywood. Um, I'm gonna need th these many cuts at like 38 and three quarter, like whatever the measurements were, I knew exactly what I needed. And putting it together was still scary though, because you know, this thing is going to have to be mounted to the studs in the wall. You know, am I gonna be able to, to do that properly? Is it gonna align? And I did make some mistakes, right? So I was building a built-in uh, dr dresser, basically. There were four drawers, two for me, two for my husband. And the first time that I built the drawers, actually, no, I think I did mess up the drawers. <laughs> the drawers wouldn't go in properly. And so I think I ended up having to make some adjustments to them. I think I might have had to go back and buy some additional wood. But for the most part, I mean, I was able to build drawers. And, and every day now, like when I go into my closet, I'm pulling out these drawers. Is it perfect? No, but you know, they're not catching on anything. They're not like, you know, you don't have to pull them out roughly. They slide in and out. It probably isn't as good as what like a seasoned woodworker would build, but that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with making some mistakes, but it was scary putting it all together and seeing if it would work. It was scary, but I, I got through it. But the thing that I want you to know is that by making that detailed plan of what I was going to do, that allowed me to move forward. So this is one of my tips for you. If you make a detailed plan of what you're doing and how you're going to do it, you are less likely to make a mistake. You're still going to make mistakes, but you're less likely to make those costly mistakes. So this is what I want you to do. When you do your research, I want you to find as many pictures of what, what it is that you're trying to build or paint or refinish. I want you to do the research and figure out step one, step two, step three, and you have to make it detailed, right? So let's, let's take building a bathroom vanity, for example. So you most likely have an old vanity there. Well, you're gonna probably have to do some prep work. So you're gonna have to remove all of your cosmetics from the old vanity drawers because maybe your cousin is gonna come over and he's gonna help you to dismantle the old vanity, right? Like that's a step. That's a step that you have to do. And so when you make a detailed plan of what you have to do and those steps, the brain says, oh, okay, we're, we're taking action. And when you take action, action is like the best thing that you can do to kill procrastination, to kill anxiety. So when you're thinking of that project and you've got that anxiety of, oh my gosh, what if this vanity breaks down? What if, I don't know if I wanna do this. By you taking action, you're telling your brain, look, I understand that I'm feeling this way, but I'm gonna take action. And once you take that action, the anxiety starts to dissipate and you're like, oh, okay, so we're moving forward on this. Okay, that's what we're doing. So you have to kind of trick your brain by taking action, even if it's little things like cleaning out the drawers so that you can dismantle the vanity. Or today I'm gonna to take the drawers out. That's it, you know, you're making progress. All right, so project number four, 
that had me sweating bullets was reupholstering a wing back chair. Do you remember that project? So if you've been following this channel or listening to my, well, my podcast at that time, I didn't have it. So I wasn't talking about the upholstering of the wing back chair, but that project, I did these upholstery classes. Let me tell you six classes. I go in there with this big chair. That's like $60 from the thrift store. I could barely even carry it myself because it was like, it was heavy as sin. So I take it into this class and the teacher, the upholstery teacher, Michael, he was so great. He's like, oh, this is a wonderful chair. I think you should just remove the fabric, leave everything else, you know, all the stuffing, the springs, leave all that stuff in there and let's just do the fabric. I was like, Michael, this chair smells really bad. We're not gonna do that. Let's just strip the entire chair and we're gonna do this chair together. Well, I didn't have fear at that moment. You know why? Because of my, my total lack of understanding and what it takes to upholster a chair. It is a lot of work, <laughs> so much work. If you don't believe me, go down below, click that series with the how to reupholster a wingback chair, and I can guarantee you, you're gonna be exhausted by the time you're done looking at those videos. There's like maybe seven, eight videos in the series <laughs> because it's so, it's so layered. And I really started to become scared when I realized like, okay, we're on like session four and I'm just getting started on this chair. What am I going to do? How am I going to finish this? So I, I ended up signing up for another six sessions. And at that time I was able to make progress, but after six more sessions for a total of 12, I said, no, Serena, you got to finish this on your own. So I finished it on my own. And can I tell you that when I was done with that chair, I was done with that chair. I did not want to look at that chair. I didn't want to sit in that chair because <laughs> it took me like two freaking years. I didn't want to put it in my house. It's in my basement right now and it's probably collecting dust. <laughs> it's crazy because it's a beautiful chair, but it, I, I don't have anywhere to put it. I, I just, I did not like the chair by the time I was done with it. So that's crazy. But, but it was, it was a project that scared me because I didn't understand how long it took to reupholster. Again, you know why? Because I didn't do my research. I went to an upholstery class and thought, oh, okay, well, six sessions, we'll get this done. So if I had done more research on it, I probably would have known that, hey, this is a big undertaking for a first, you know, big project. And so I think, you know, just doing your research, you, you understand more about what you're about to tackle so that you're not disillusioned that it's gonna take this much time and it's really gonna take this much time, right? All right, so the last project was building a deck. And you just saw that video not too long ago. Over the summer, I built this um, eight by four deck on the front of my she shed. And I've had my, my shed for almost two years. So it took me that amount of time to get the courage to attempt this project. And why was that? Well, the reason is because I'm thinking that I had to dig down 30 inches below the frost line, pour concrete. What if I set the posts wrong and now I've got posts in concrete that are not even where they're supposed to be aligned. They're not straight. They're not plumb. You know, all of these things were running through my mind. This is what I was afraid of. I'm going to make a mistake and I'm not going to be able to complete this or it's going to fall down. But surprisingly, I did some research. <laughs> See, there's that R word again. I did some research and I found that there are products that you could use in order to build a deck and not have to go down below. It's a floating deck. It didn't have to be this extravagant, you know, difficult, um, didn't have to be this extravagant, difficult project. It just needed to be sound. And here's all the things you have to do to make sure it's sound. Oh, another thing that I was able to do is sketch it, use SketchUp in order to create this deck online. And once I had that, idea in my mind of what it needed to look like, then I could move forward. But it still took me a lot of time. I mean, it took me, I don't want to say two months. It could have been two months <laughs> because sometimes I would get to, no, it couldn't have been two months. Was it two months? I really don't remember, but it took me longer than, than I felt necessary. But once I finished it, somebody on my YouTube channel, somebody in the comments was like, you could drive a tank on that on that deck. <laughs> and they're right. It is solid. And here's the great thing. After I finished that deck, I did another deck under my gazebo. You saw that deck as well. That took me a fraction of the time. 
And I, I didn't even have to research because I'd already done it. I'd already done the research. The research was the first deck. So the second one um, was even less involved because it was a ground level floating deck. And I was able to get it done like that. Now I do have one more. You, don't, you can't see over here to the side, but I've got one more little deck I need to do for this three, this, you know, like a three by three deck, just something that when I'm stepping out of that door, then I've got a step down and I don't have to like, you know, hurt my knees. <laughs> so those are the five projects that I was deathly afraid of and I procrastinated. And if you are procrastinating on your projects, here are five solutions, five things that you can do to move yourself forward, okay? Because I get it. You're afraid of wasting time. You're afraid of wasting money. You're afraid of bruising your ego because this project that you're wanting to do is going to uncover the fact that you don't feel like you're intelligent enough or you don't feel like you're skilled enough. Maybe everybody on Instagram is smarter than you. You don't have to tell yourself these lies. These are the things that you have to do. And there's probably more than five solutions, but I'm gonna keep it simple for you. All right, so let's go through the first one and some of these I've already repeated, but because they're so good, I'm gonna repeat them multiple times. The first one is action. You have to take action. Think about a time in your life when you felt anxiety over something, right? It could be, I don't know, like an unpaid bill or you have to make a decision about something or I don't know, something's just worrying you. But the minute you take action, suddenly you feel like you're in control, right? Like you have this situation by the range, you know exactly what you need to do. And if you don't know what you need to do, you're gonna figure it out because you're taking action. So that's the thing that you have to do. And that action could be research, that action could be like I had used in the example with the um, you know, building your own va vanity. It could be removing all your cosmetics today, right? And then tomorrow it could be cleaning out the inside of the vanity because you got a lot of cleaning products and stuff. Any action is going to tell your brain, hey, look, that anxiety that you're putting forth, <laughs> it doesn't live here. You're not gonna live in my head. We're gonna, we're gonna put action behind what we wanna do. And that actually releases some kind of chemical in the brain, right? I don't know if it's like dopamine or oxytocin. It's probably dopamine. That's probably the one. And it's going to release this, this chemical that's going to make you feel good because you're taking action and it's going to release that stress that you're feeling. So the next thing is, oh, and also to ask questions, you know, it could be your favorite blogger. It could be somebody who's done a project that you've done and that you have questions about that's action. So all of those things and the research come together for you to move on to the next step. So the next step to move forward in your projects that scare you is to make a detailed plan. That plan has to include steps that you're not even thinking about, right? That plan could be calling your cousin to come help you move the deck boards to the back, to the, to the backyard, right? That's still action, but it's something that's on your list. It's on your plan so that you know what has to happen first, second, third, fourth. And this is, this is why this is so important. For me, starting a project is very hard. And even, I'll tell you, even projects that I know what I'm doing, I could be painting a piece of furniture or refinishing a piece of furniture. I know what I need to do, but sometimes getting all sorted in my head feels like a lot, right? There's a friend of mine, he's a creator. He's, I mean, he's, he builds amazing stuff. He does amazing projects for people. He's a contractor. And he had told me one day, and I thought this was hilarious. He's like, yeah, some days I just, I just have a hard time getting started. <laughs> like, what? You have a hard time getting started? Like, you were like the king of, he's got this amazing engraver he uh, does these great projects for people where he's building like kitchen islands. He's doing all kinds of banisters and like wood floor. He's doing all of these projects and even he has a hard time getting started every day. So think about you, somebody who may not have as much experience. You probably have a hard time getting up and saying, hey, I'm gonna go work on that thing today. What, how do you even get started? What's that thing even start with? What's that? that little starting point to move you forward. Well, in my opinion, the times when I have the most success with projects is when I create that detailed plan and it can have some silly thing that doesn't even make any sense. Like, you know, step one, clean up the shed. 
clean up the shed, that has nothing to do with this other thing I'm doing. Well, it actually might because maybe having a clean shed means that I'm feeling okay, now I'm ready to create something else in this space. Or like I said, it could be calling your cousin to come help you move something because that thing has to be moved before you can go do the other thing. Or it could be, you know, going to Home Depot to find three different flooring options that I want for this tile that I want to put in my house. So any of those things are action items that can be marked off. And when you have that detailed plan, it helps you to move forward. Now, let's say once you start researching things, right? You start finding out that, okay, to build this deck, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, 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 that. And you've looked at videos, you've looked at blog posts, you've looked at Instagram. Take all of that information and put it into your detailed plan. Don't just print out somebody else's instructions and say, oh, I'll just follow these when I'm ready to get going. No, you actually have to go through it in your mind and write it down. I actually like to tell people to write things down on paper. If you don't want to do that, type it up, but create your own plan. Because when you actually take all of this research that you've done and then put it into your own plan, now your mind is actually working through each of those steps. You're visualizing yourself doing that. And that is, a, let me tell you, that is a powerful thing. I majored in psychology when I was in, when I was in um, college. <laughs> and I was really interested in like social psychology and how you know, the brain works when it comes to like how we trick ourselves into things and how we interact with other people and how we interact with ourselves. The brain is a powerful thing. When you start writing down these step-by-step -step instructions of what you need to do, in your brain, you're already doing it. And so now you've laid the foundation in your brain, you've imagined yourself doing these things and it's that much easier to get up and get it done. And it's a just, at this point, it's just a matter of you checking things off like, okay, call cousin Steve to move these bags of uh, mulch to do this gardening project, check, I called him. Okay, now I have to go and do step number two. And before you know it, you get to the end of the project, right? <laughs> so make that detailed step. The next thing is don't set a deadline for yourself. When you are afraid of a project, do not set a deadline for yourself. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because what happens is that if you don't meet that deadline, you feel bad about yourself, right? You feel like you're doing something wrong, but this is the first time that you've done it. So how do you know how long it's really going to take? You don't know how long it's going to take for you to build this kitchen island or to lay this vinyl floor. You have no idea. And there might be times that come up during the project where you're not sure what the next step is. So you have to kind of take a pause. I did that with my deck. Take a pause <laughs> and figure out, regroup and figure out what you have to do next. So if you set that deadline for yourself, you're just putting undue stress on yourself. So have an idea of that you want to get done in three or four weeks, but it might take six to eight weeks, you know, and that's okay. Um, and don't rush through it. <laughs> don't rush through it because again, if you rush through it, you're probably going to make some mistakes that could be costly, right? You don't want to have to go and buy new pieces of wood in order to fix what you messed up because you were just rushing to get, to get it done. So don't set a, don't set a deadline for yourself and accept that you are going to make mistakes. Even with this detailed plan, there are still mistakes that you are going to make. And when you make those mistakes, consider it a lesson learned, it probably didn't cost you that much money. <laughs> and then you can move on to the next thing. So I'll tell you, when I was building my bathroom vanity, I had two doors that I was building and I needed to do some hardware. And this is like hardware that's, that's hidden. So you had to drill for the installation of it. And I had used a Craig, I think it was like a Craig jig or some sort of Craig jig in order to, to drill this. It came with its own forcer, uh, Forstner bit. And I didn't realize that I had drilled all the way through <laughs> the wood. So I completely ruined the doors. I, I tried to like, you no, know, I think I, I ruined the doors. I had to go back and get more wood. I tried to drill them again, ended up doing the same thing, but it didn't look quite as bad. <laughs> and so I ended up having to like do some sort of wood glue and cover it up. You can see it in the blog post. Um, but I learned that, okay, if I'm doing doors, maybe I need to find another tool. Maybe there's like something I need to do a little bit differently so that next time I'm building these doors on something that I need to, to drill with this, with, with this kit, 
then I have to be super careful, careful because I'll drill all the way through. So these are the things that you learn. You're going to make mistakes when you do your project. Hopefully it's not something that's like super costly, but sometimes it is. More often than not, it's probably just going to get another piece of wood, but you learn. And then when you take that information and you go on to the next project, you learn something else. <laughs> it's just, it's a, you, you never learn all that you need to in one or two projects. Like there's always something that you're going to learn, something you're going to mess up. And I'll tell you, even when I had an, an electrician come to wire my shed, the exterior part of my shed, getting the electrician um, to, to run the wires from the house into the shed, there were things that we, like there were challenges that we ran into and we had to figure out how to work around those challenges. It happens even, pro, even with professionals. So, you know, those are just some things to keep in mind that nobody's perfect. I don't care how much experience you have. There's always something that, that comes up, especially when you're doing a new project. And I'll tell you, when I was building my deck, there were things that I learned in building my deck that really helped when I was building the small deck the ground level deck under my gazebo. So for example, um, when you're building a deck, right, you're putting decking on top of your deck and you want to make sure that you're not getting to the end and you have a little tiny skinny piece left. And that's what happened with the gazebo deck. I completely forgot to design the deck so that it was the perfect size so that the decking would, would, would work. Right? So when I got to the, so when I started planning out, as I was working on it, when I started laying the boards down, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm going to have a little skinny two inch piece of wood <laughs> right on the end of my deck on the front part. I can't even hide it. So I should have probably planned the size a little bit better to account for that, the size of that decking, which is five and a half inches wide. So here's what I did. I came up with a solution. As I was working my way to the end, I stopped and worked from the end that was going to be short and I ended up working towards the middle of the deck. Now instead of leaving that two inch piece in the middle, what I did was I took two full boards, right? Five and a half inches each, five and a half inch, and I actually trimmed them down to four inches so that in the center of the deck, if you look closely, you can see that they are a little slimmer than the other board, than, 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 than the other decking. <laughs> And it was perfect. It was perfect. You can't even tell. So not only did I learn, Hey, that's right. When you're planning out a deck, make sure that the size of the deck can accommodate the decking at five and a half inches. And if you do run into that problem, then work your way to the middle and try to, or maybe you don't even have to work your way to the middle. You might have a couple boards where you have to split that difference and you blend it into the other decking and you can't even tell. So that's what I did. I feel good about that. I was like, way to go, Serena, way to think. Of course, if you had done it right, you wouldn't have had to do all that, but you ran into a problem, came up with a solution and it works well. <laughs> so those are some things I would just tell you to do. Um, and you know, the last thing I would say is to give yourself time to brag about your success. This is a project that you were afraid to start. You did it and it turned out well. Yeah, you had problems, you had errors. There were things that came up that gave you problems, gave you a little bit of nightmares maybe, but you figured it out. And what I would tell you is when you go to share your project on Instagram or when you're giving, uh, you know, showing your friends pictures or you're giving somebody the update on how things went, you can tell them like, Oh, here's, here are some of the things that I learned with this project, but don't throw yourself under the bus. Don't throw your project under the bus. Don't feel like you have to excuse the project or apologize. Oh yeah. You know, Hey, I, there's some mistakes here. I do it. I do it myself. Now when I'm posting things on Instagram or on YouTube, I'm going to tell you what mistakes I made. <laughs> I'm not going to hide those because I think there's value in that. And I want you to learn what I did wrong. And I want to learn what I did wrong. And I want to remember those things. Sometimes I don't remember what I've done during projects, right? Especially if it's been a long time ago. So I may go back and watch an old video of mine and say, Oh, that's right. Well, when I was laying this, this floor, that's right. I had to make this calculation so that the floor was even. So I will even go back and watch my own videos. But when you're telling people about your project or you're showing them pictures, or if you're sending me pictures of your project, don't discount what you've accomplished. 
is all I'm saying. Don't tell me, oh yeah, you know, it didn't, it's not perfect. I did, I did this wrong and I did that wrong. It's okay. You learned. It looks great. Feel proud of yourself. Understand that this confidence will now lead you into your next project. And you may not be as hesitant, especially if it's something that, you know, now you've already done it. You've done your first piece of furniture. You've built your first deck. Now you can go do the other thing and it can go that much faster and be that much more enjoyable. And then you can make another mistake and learn something else. All right. So anyway, I, I hope that this video, this podcast was helpful for you to understand that I make mistakes. I have fear. There are projects that I, I just, I don't know, like they just cause me to be afraid to move forward. We all have them. We're all human. But the main thing is that you do your research, make a detailed plan, commit to moving forward, put that action in place so that you can move forward on your projects. Because I have a belief that creating is like therapy, right? When you create something, it feels good. It makes you happy to get up. You can't wait to go work on it. You know, maybe it's something that you only get time during the weekends to work on. You can't wait till Saturday to come so you can just spend all day working on this project. Or maybe you only have two hours. You can't wait to go to the garage and go put a coat of paint on this thing that you've been working on. It feels good. And that's what I want for you is to feel good and to feel proud of your projects and to know that you did it and that you don't have to be afraid to move forward on the next project, right? <laughs> anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. What I want to know from you down below in the comments, or if you're watching this, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave the comment down below. If you're listening to this on a podcast, you can hop over to YouTube if you want to add your comments. But I want to know from you, what is that project that Two things, actually. What, tell me about a time when you were like deathly afraid of tackling a project and you actually did it <laughs> and you feel like you did a pretty good job. I want to know that. And you can also tell me what is that upcoming project for you that you are like deathly afraid of? Like you're just so afraid to move forward on it. I want to know down in the comments, what is that project? And I guess if I share that, that if I answer my own question, I think for me that project would be my garage. I am afraid of tackling my garage. And I'm, I'm afraid of tackling it, not because it's hard, but because it's overwhelming. My garage, if you have watched my YouTube channel, I will try to find a link down below, but it looks worse than it did even before. <laughs> I mean, before I would stack it up with furniture and I would never be able to get through all of the projects. Now I don't buy hardly any furniture because I don't have a need for it. And then even if I refinish it, I'm not sure you know, where it's going to go in the house or if I should just donate it to Habitat. I'm not sure. So I don't buy a lot of stuff unless I see something that I really, really like. And I'm like, all right, I got to get those chairs. Like I have to get those. I will work on those someday. So there's not a lot of furniture stacked up in my garage, but the stuff that's in there is a lot of tools. There's a lot of materials. There's a lot of you know, like scrap wood and things that you, you, you think that you'll use, but you haven't used them yet. And you're afraid to get you get, get rid of it because it's valuable. It feels like it has value, but it doesn't really have value for you. And that's my big, like, Oh, I don't want to face this. I'm procrastinating on it. And I told myself, I'm going to do this in November. I am tackling my garage in November. And it, you know, here's the thing. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be, I guess this would be, this will be a tip for you. It doesn't have to be something that you accomplish all in one day, right? So if it is something like a garage or an office that you're trying to clean out, you can do it in stages. And that's what I try to do. I, I try to take a section at a time, right? So what I need to do is make that detailed action plan of what I'm going to do first and and just put it into place. That, that's what I need to do. Like, I know that's what I need to do. <laughs> so for me, that is that thing that I'm like, oh, I'm dreading this, but I'm going to get it done. And you know, I'm going to record it, right? Like, you know, I'm going to record it. So you will get to see my nasty garage. <laughs> All right. But for you, what is that project that you're just dreading, but you know, you have to get done. You know, you want to get it done, but you just feel scared. Leave that down below and let me know. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, if you like having a chat with me like this, please give me a thumbs up leave a comment. It lets YouTube know that, Hey, I'm showing up for Serena. We're here. We're having a conversation because the more people that like this video, the more people that comment, then YouTube's like, Oh, 
let me share this with more people. And then it just brings more people into the community that we can actually have a conversation with. All right, so I will see you next video. I will see you next podcast. I'm not sure when this is going to go live, but regardless, just leave a comment and let's have fun. Let's talk down in the comments. All right, I will see you next video. Okay, now go. Go away. Seriously, go!